On this edition of Lakeville City Limits, we head over to the Heritage Center, where Linda Walter gives us a tour of the Historical Society. Next, I talk with Shelley Carney about the upcoming art festival happening at the Lakeville Area Arts Center. Hello, I'm City Administrator Steve Melke. Welcome to City Limits, Lakeville's public information program. Up first on today's show, we find out about the Historical Society located across the street from City Hall in the Heritage Center. Hi, I'm Linda Walter, the Senior Coordinator here at the Lakeville Senior Center. And with me today is Wally Potter. He's the treasurer of the Historical Society. And um, I don't know that a lot of you know, but Wally was the key person who helped us get into this building. So Wally, would you like to tell me a little bit about the Historical Society? Well, the Historical Society started uh, about 15 years ago now, and uh, we were in the rectory building uh, down by the Art Center, uh, where the, the city has uh, gotten their new center in, in the old Catholic Church. Uh, down there we had a series of small rooms and, uh, and very little participation by anybody because they just didn't know that we were there. Uh, we've moved here now uh, a year ago, roughly a year ago, and uh, we've had uh, far more exposure here by a hundred times than we had down there, which, is, which has been great. Uh, the space has worked out uh, unbelievably well. Uh, we've changed uh, displays a few times, and, uh, and, the, uh, uh, and the work area that we have uh, and, and the, to, to back up what we have for storage has been uh, fantastic. It's, uh, it's worked out very, very well. Well, that's good. What are your hours? We're open uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 10 to 1. Uh, we're, we're just kind of testing the water to see when we have. But we're also open for all of the major functions in the building. Primarily, the displays here, uh, the interesting, the ones that uh, hold the most interest are Amherst Park and the White Sabahm Resort and, and the church displays and schools. So are you accepting donations? We'll accept donations uh, for either the Historical Society or, as you know, we, we want uh, donations to the Heritage Center. We are uh, we, uh, supposed to make up the difference in a bridge loan, uh, and uh, we've been working towards that uh, with uh, fundraisers. Uh, we have a fundraiser coming up uh, next month, uh, the 16th of September, a uh, golf tournament and fundraiser for the Heritage Center. Crystal Lake Golf Course, uh, mm -hmm. we're looking for sponsors, they're $150, and uh, we're looking for golfers uh, primarily. Uh, we need we need a lot of golfers. Uh, sponsors have been uh, amazingly uh, helpful. It's $100 uh, per person for golf and dinner. We'll have a raffle, uh, and there's a set of Callaway golf irons and a golf Callaway golf bag, and there'll be other, a lot of other prizes. Uh, a lot of silent auction prize uh, items uh, that'll be that'll be available, and uh, hopefully, uh, if you can't golf, come out for dinner. You know? Okay, sounds good. Also, now I'm wondering, do you need volunteers for here at the Historical Society? We're always looking for help here. We're uh, we're either with displays or with uh, helping us man the building. Uh, uh, we we welcome people to the new people to come in and we'll, we'll try to educate you as much as we can we all had to learn uh, i i'm not from lakeville originally and, and uh, so you just have to there's a lot of uh, literature that you can look at but uh, we need help with the open hours and we need help uh, with some of the displays that we we work on but uh, uh, the board uh, the board's always looking for more people and and uh, and new people so we're mm -hmm. we're we're welcome for that do you um, also need donations for the Historical Society in regards to like, high school annuals or Well, any we've of been that? yeah, we've been able to pretty much sustain <clears throat> our own uh, uh, display costs and that kind of thing with our memberships. Uh, uh, but we're uh, we're looking for uh, well, we're looking for display items. We're looking for photos. Uh, anybody that has photos in their family that. Uh, that uh, uh, they can go through, and we will we'll bring them in. We'll copy them. We'll give them back to you. We won't don't have to keep them. Uh, you can donate them if you like. But uh, we just uh, we've had in the past we've had some photo nights where people have brought in photos and we've copied them on the spot and taken them back. But that gets to be a little hard to do, you know, depending on how many people would bring in. But uh, we sure encourage everybody to to go through their through their. Uh, uh, picture drawers and their archives and, and uh, dig out what they can and we uh, we just uh, need need more photos and, and and information on your family and whatever but wherever we can we'll 
we'll try to start a file on a family history if it's a local family uh, like the Fredericksons and, and others others but uh, primarily it's, it's it's on old businesses also and, and Antlers Park is uh, we continue to get stuff every day for Antler, you know every week for Antlers Park it seemed like uh, and uh, a lot of people don't realize the, the old resorts that were on the lake and the White Bomb Resort and, and others so it's uh, it's uh, but we do need you know, we need we, we don't have a lot of artifacts we just don't have space for a lot of artifacts but but if we if it's smaller items uh, we certainly would like to see and, and and determine whether we could use them or not so okay well Wally thank you so much for being with me today I appreciate thank that you. and uh, good luck on the golf tournament we're we, very excited we, about we that need, we need help <laughs> so, we need golfers okay. thank you yeah. September is Senior Center Month. The 2013 theme is Senior Centers Experts at Living Well. In honor of Senior Center Week, we are offering a number of special programs. A fall fashion show in tea is planned for September 13th. You can shop for fashions from 9 a.m. to 11, and then afterwards enjoy the tea at 11 a.m. Cost is only $10. Ken Stever, one of our members and an author, will introduce his new book, Growing Up on the Mississippi. He'll be here at the center for a book signing on September 17th at 1.30 p.m. You can visit with him. He'll tell you how he happened to uh, start to write this book, and um, you also can purchase one. If you are a diabetic, you'll be pleased to know that Medicare covers a free pair of therapeutic shoes and three inserts per calendar year. A representative from Diabetic Shoe Source will be here on September 20th from 9.30 to 11.30 to give you all the details and help you order your shoes. Finally, on September 26th, we will celebrate our first anniversary of being here in our beautiful new building. We will celebrate it by having a lasagna dinner sponsored by the KC's, followed by a speech from our consul and entertainment by our seniors. Can you believe it's already flu season? Our flu shots are scheduled for September 19th from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. It's a drop-in basis. Major insurance plans are accepted. Otherwise, cost of flu shots are $30. Pneumonia shots are $75. Family Fresh Market gives an awesome, healthy cooking class here at the center every other month. This month, it will be held on September 25th at 1.30 p.m. At this session, you will receive many delicious apple recipes besides sampling the recipes beforehand. Our popular technology classes will begin in October. Apple expert Mike Paul will be offering the following classes beginning October 24th. They will be Get to Know Your iPad, Beyond the Basics, Tricks of the Trade, and exploring entertainment. Our biannual shredding event will be held on September 25th and October 2nd. On the 25th, you will learn which documents to keep and which to destroy. And then on October 2nd, you can bring your documents to destroy. Cost to shred is only $5 and there's no limit on how much you can shred. Just bring all of your documents in brown grocery bags. And finally, we are trying to organize a clown club. If you enjoy having fun and making others happy, you will certainly enjoy this program. So if you have any questions in regards to the clown club, just call me at 952-985-4622. We offer many other programs here at the Senior Center. I've only touched on a few. You can check us out online at www.lakevillemn.com dot gov or stop by Heritage Center at 20110 Holy Oak Avenue. Our office hours are 8 to 430 Monday through Friday and we would love to have you stop by pick up a newsletter and take a tour. If you get a chance we would love to have you stop by the Historical Society and take a tour on one of the days that they're open which was Monday and Wednesdays from 10 to 1.30. I know that you will really enjoy the tour. They just have so many fabulous things here. It's a very interesting place to be. And if 
If you have any questions, feel free to call us at 952-985-4622 or look us up on the website at www.lakevillemn.gov. And have a great fall. <laughs> I'm Hank, a water hog, and I'm glad there's plenty of water to waste. As a water hog, I always like to have water already running in the room when I come in or when I go to take a tubby. I also like to water when city regulations tell me not to. Oh, oh well, another $200 fine. My favorite way to waste, I mean use water, is to wash my driveway. <laughs> Joining me today is Shelly Carney, director of the Lakeville Arts Festival. Shelly, thanks for joining me on City Limits. Thanks for having me, Steve. So you're the director of the Arts Festival. What does that mean? Well, the director, I really, my responsibility really as a volunteer is to bring all different groups of people together, different volunteers, 200 plus together, to put on an art festival that, um, where we host about 70 artists every year exhibiting artists that sell their wares, um, educate you on their different art mediums. Uh, performing artists, literary authors come to our festival and present and do book readings and signings, uh, demonstrations, uh, probably six to ten def different demonstrations throughout the festival. Um, my job is really to uh, gather support from the community, um, sponsorship from local businesses, and people that have interest and bring that all together and throw a grandiose, fun, free festival for two days for our city. And it sounds like an awful lot of work. How, how long has the Arts Festival been going on? This is, um, this fall will be our 11th year. So 11 years uh, uh, in running and every year it progresses, every year it moves forward. We're really proud of that. It becomes more and more uh, recognized. Um, with each year, like I said, we gain a lot of momentum and a lot of progress, and we have more and more artists that apply to our art festival. We have a juried art festival, so you have to actually be juried into this festival um, in order to sell uh, your, your artwork and your work forms. And we have artists that are artists that have um, art pieces out there that may be, you know, thousands of dollars all the way to those artists that have earrings that are great quality earrings for twenty, twenty-five dollars. So it's a huge plethora of different types of artwork that our community members can, can purchase. So I do know from past experience that it is a high quality arts festival, but not everybody is aware that we have an arts festival or even where it's held. So let's talk a little bit about the logistics. Where, sure. where is the arts festival held? The art festival is at um, the Lakeville Area Arts Center, which is on the corner of Holyoke and 210, right downtown, uh, the old renovated Catholic Church that has been our art center now for going on 12 years. And um, the festival is held always the third weekend in September, uh, September 21st and 22nd. It's a Saturday, Sunday, Saturday 10 to 6, Sunday 10 to 5. And if they come there, what are they going to find on top of just a uh, great art? Sure. What they'll find is um, they'll have uh, the opportunity. While, while we really cater uh, to a family uh, fun-filled event, it also is an event for couples, for singles, for adults, for children, for people of all ages. So to kind of expand on what we have, we have the visual artists, about 72 artists this year, where um, they're going to be selling their artwork. We have a lovely wine and beer garden called Lake Vinery and Hops, which we offer some of the finest wines from the Taste of Lakeville that won awards, along with various IPA beers for adults to appreciate and enjoy. As I said a little bit earlier, we spoke of um, the performing artists that we have, uh, three bands on 
Friday or Saturday and four bands on Sunday. Um, the culinary efforts are exquisite at the art festival, very unique. We have sweet and savory um, homemade strudels. We have fire oven roasted pizzas. We have fancy mac and cheese. We have an, an ice creamery um, cart. We have a chocolatier. So we have all sorts of great um, little tastes and treats for people of all ages. In addition to um, some of those, uh, the eats and treats, we also offer a fantastic community art project and um, a young at art tent. Different art venues, different art projects that adults can uh, get involved in as well as the kids. Our young at art tent is always filled with fantastic projects for the young people to do. Our community project is always one that's a big, huge event um, supported by our community members each and every year. And typically those uh, pieces are hung throughout either the Art Center or in some community location here in Lakeville. This year, for example, our, um, our community art project is one where we're recreating um, one of Surratt's best known and largest paintings. It's uh, one where, and it's done through pointillism. He's an artist, George Surratt in the late 1800s, brought pointillism into um, the realm of painting. So all of us are gonna be able to participate and see an end result project of Surratt's biggest painting in the, in the art center after so the event. So what is, what is pointillism? I don't know what that is. Pointillism is simply, um, as, you, as it sounds, it's, it's a manner with uh, different types of paint where you have um, the opportunity on your canvas to maybe take a brown, a uh, black, or a blue and, and just point art, all it is. And as somebody builds on that point with a different color and somebody else builds on that point with a different color uh, within our community project anyway, um, it's gonna create a scene for you. And so these dots all make up a fantastic picture. So as a community, we're gonna dot it out and then have a fantastic Surratt uh, painting in our art center. That'll be fantastic. And I've seen some of the other, and it, some of it's exhibited outside the center, some of it's inside the center. Yep, it's absolutely. always very high quality. It's always amazing. It's always amazing work, and it's always done by our community members. It's so fun to be able to have people go to the art center and pick out specifically, hey, that's the piece that I did, or that's the right. ad that I gave to that particular painting or picture. It really is cool. It is. Well, you mentioned uh, all of the activities that are taking place. Let's talk a little bit about the finances that are associated with it. First of all, is there a, is there a cost to go to the art center or art festival? Excuse me. The art festival itself, there is no there is no cost. It's a free festival, and it's one that really shouldn't be missed. It is so, honestly, if I could take a step back and just be an attendee and not somebody that's worked on the project over you know over the past year or any of those that are volunteers, it's one for sure that you shouldn't miss. It's just fantastic and. Um, to develop and to create this art festival, we would not be able to do so without the sponsorship of our local and um, uh, more of our local businesses. It, it typically takes about 25, we look as, uh, as a group of fundraisers, the Friends of the Lakeville Area Art Center, to raise approximately $25,000 and higher every year to afford this festival, because it is a great quality festival. If I might take the opportunity just to mention some of those big sponsors that have helped us out so Absolutely. much, I would really appreciate that. We've, we've been really blessed with having um, companies such as Dick Sanitation, Lakeville Sanitation Service, to be one of our platinum sponsors for years and years and years in this festival. A young lady by the name of Kelly Hartman took it upon herself to design our um, website and recreate some of our marketing material, which takes hours of time. Um, Cornerstone Copy Center, Lynn Hunter Designs, Minnesota Public Radio, MOM, Multi Meal Brands, Sterling State Bank, and Venture Photography are some of our very high level um, sponsors. Uh, there's, there's many more. Believe it or not, we have 62 sponsors. Every little bit counts, and every little bit goes directly to the festival. You'd be amazed at um, uh, what the sponsorship actually affords as well. Um, in addition to the supplies and all the logistics and the tents and um, the bands and the supplies for the Young at Art Tent in our community art project, it also affords a fantastic program, uh, our Emerging Artist Program that has grown over the last 11 years. We have eight emerging artists this year. All eight emerging artists have to be, well, 25 of them actually uh, applied for the program. It's a program where to uh, 
that they have to actually have um, never exhibited before. So it's a brand new, fresh artist or an artist that's had hesitation to actually go out there and exhibit. So this is their first time exhibit. We afford the tents for them. There are supplies that they need to set up their tents. Um, we also offer them education and network opportunities with other artists. We involve them and enroll them in the National Association of Independent Artists for one year where they have a mentor that helps them. So what we like to do is take these young artists, these beginning artists, and help them develop a network in the community in which they have an interest. In doing so, we have a great success story. We had an emerging artist, Shane Anderson, in 2007 who won, applied to our festival as an emerging artist, first time ever exhibited, won our show as an exhibit, uh, emerging artist. Six years later, projects six years to this year, he is the featured artist for the Uptown Art Festival in 2013. Every year he won an award. His first year, he started here at Lakeville. Isn't we gave that him nice? that opportunity, we loved it. Yeah, so it, you mentioned some of the sponsors. Yes. And there's an awful lot of uh, in information for people to, uh, to to get a hold of that we're not going to be able to talk about today. So how might people learn more about the Arts Festival? Absolutely. Our Art Festival, all the information is on this fabulous website. It's www.lakevilleartfestival.org. And you can click on the tabs. It's an easy maneuvering site. You can learn who our sponsors are, how it is you could volunteer. There's a volunteer form there as well, um, what bands are playing. Uh, what food groups are going to be there. Uh, everything about the festival would be on that website. You know, Shelley, and I think we, we kind of failed to mention the group that puts the Arts Festival on. We talked about you and all the volunteers, but uh, talk a little bit about the foundation to, uh, to make this possible. Yes, there's um, a group called the Friends of the Lakeville Area Art Center, and they um, really were founded uh, at the time the Art Center was making its changes or the church was making its changes to the Art Center and they really are a group of people that not only volunteer their time, energy and effort um, and hearts and compassion to this, this particular project, they go out there and knock on the doors of many businesses who's probably been knocked on before asking for maybe a donation or a support because it is completely funded. It's a fantastic group. I think our board of directors has anywhere from eight to ten players in it right now. And that, that uh, group also is in charge of raising funds to help support the center itself. Absolutely, absolutely. And do they garner some funds from this festival? What we like to do is we certainly pay for um, you know, the use of the art center. And then what we like to do as well is we've applied for grants in conjunction with the art center. We were awarded and, and, and recognized at the Minnesota State Arts Board this year with a grant that allows us to get sustainable items for our art center as well as the art festival. Um, things like sound equipment so we can have performing artists. Things like kilns for the uh, art center itself. So yes, we support one another hand in glove. It's the most major festival that's actually put on, so to speak, um, by the art center, not just rented through uh, the right. building and the, the, the place itself. Well, Shelley, it sounds like it's going to be a fantastic time. Are you going to promise good weather? I can't promise good weather. I can promise an appearance by uh, Mr. Munson. May I take a moment to tell you who Mr. Munson is? Please. So Mr. Munson is a new character we're introducing this year. For those of you that appreciate literary artwork, we have first-time author Nancy Nolan, who is a retired 18-year veteran in the Lakeville school system as a school counselor in the elementary school system. And um, Nancy, together with her sister as an illustrator, uh, collaborated. They have their very, very first book, Mr. Munson's It Vice, which teaches young generation and us older generation profound um, ways to be a good friend. Uh, she takes her years of experience and brings it back to this book, which is a classic, and it's going to be a, uh, the first in a series of different books. I encourage teachers, children to stop out, adults to meet Mr. Munson and Nancy Nolan on Saturday and Sunday. Well, that sounds fantastic and a nice change. I think when people think of art, they think of things that you can see or hear but literary arts are certainly an important part as well. It is, absolutely, along with some fantastic music. We'd love to see everybody out there. Wonderful, Shelley. Thanks for all your dedicated work to making sure this happens. And thanks for joining me on City Limits. Thanks so much, Steve. Did you know that residential smoke alarms need to be replaced every 10 years? Now is a good time to check to see when your alarms were manufactured. On many models, a date will be located on the back of the unit. 
If they are over 10 years old, they need to be replaced. To find out more about smoke alarms and requirements for CO detectors, watch the latest episode of LFD On Call on cable channel 16, online at the city's website, or subscribe to LG TV podcasts on your iOS device. The curtain is going up for this year's season at the Lakeville Area Performing Arts Center. And this year, there's something for everyone. From a wide array of musical stylings to holiday seasonal performances, the Lakeville Area Arts Center offers the finest in regional entertainment. New this season, reserve seating for all performances. To find program descriptions and buy tickets online, visit our new website at www.lakevilleareaartcenter.com. We remind residents that odd even watering restrictions are in effect. In addition to the odd even watering schedule, watering is not allowed between 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. on any day. Fines will be imposed for non-compliance with the watering restriction. Now it's time for the answer to today's trivia question, which is, how many years has outgoing police chief Tom Von Hoff served with the city? If you guessed B, 33 years, you would be correct. Recently, Chief Von Hoff announced his retirement from the department. Tom started working for the department in 1980 and has worked for the city of Lakeville his entire career becoming police chief in 2006. We would like to congratulate Tom on his retirement and his future endeavors. Here's a look at some of the road construction happening in the city. The intersection of Dodd Boulevard and Highview Avenue continues to be closed during the construction of a roundabout. In addition to the upgraded intersection, both Dodd and Highview will have improvements approaching the intersection. Detour routes are posted and this project is expected to be completed by late September. Another roundabout is being constructed at the intersection of 205th Street and Kenrick Avenue, and this project is open fully to traffic. Landscaping and other construction will continue for a few more weeks. Many of the streets in the Valley Park and Clay's Acres neighborhoods are undergoing reconstruction. Along with new streets, there are stormwater and utility improvements taking place. Expect these improvements to be completed sometime in the fall. Here is a look at some of the upcoming public meetings that you can attend at City Hall. The City Council will be meeting on Monday, September 16th at 7 p.m. The Parks, Recreation and Natural Resources Committee will be meeting on Wednesday, September 18th at 6 p.m. The Planning Commission meets on Thursday, September 19th at 6 p.m. And the Economic Development Commission will hold its meeting on Tuesday, September 24th at 4.30 p.m. For more information on government meetings and the role of our boards and commissions, visit the city website at www.lakevillemn.gov. That's it for this edition of Lakeville City Limits. Thanks for watching. If you experience a problem with your cable TV service here in Lakeville, you should first contact Charter Communications at 1-800-581-0081. If you do not receive a satisfactory response, you can call the city at 985 4407 and we will assist you in resolving your problem. And just a reminder, you can see all of our programming online on the city website at www.lakevillemm.gov. Thanks again for watching this program and all of the programming here on LG TV.